Hello and welcome to our video on using a word matrix and word sums to help students understand the concept of a base word and then adding on a suffix or a prefix to the base word. This word matrix and the word sum idea both come from a researcher named Pete Bowers. And so what I'm teaching you today comes from his work. So I've chosen the base word play because it's a simple base word. There's not going to be any need to double a letter when I add a suffix or drop an E or change the Y to I or any of those suffix rules. So I can really focus on teaching the children how to use this word matrix and how to write word sums without having to worry about any extra rules. So the base word is play. And what we want students to do is to think about what play means. So it's just kind of doing something for fun. And then what are some other words that have play in it? Um, maybe that we can add a suffix. We might want to um, give a sentence to maybe encourage them and lead them down the path of what we're meaning. So we could say, I am going to play or right now I am play what? And then we would hope they would come up with the suff or with the word playing. So then we say, okay, so the base word is play. What's that suffix that you've added on? And we want them to come up with ing. And then we write the word sum. So we spell it P-L-A-Y. And I'm saying this A-Y quickly because those two letters represent one sound. I want the students to see them as a chunk when they read and when they spell. So P-L. A-Y plus I-N-G, again notice I said that quickly because I want them to see it as a chunk, is rewritten as P-L-A-Y-I-N-G. So I still spell it again, but I don't put the spaces in, I don't put the addition sign in, I write it just like I'm going to write it when I'm working on a written piece. So there's playing. We could also do plays right so just add our basic suffix s we could do played even though it sounds like a d we think about the meaning what does it mean i did it in the past so when we mean in the past we add suffix ed so p l a y plus e d is rewritten as p l a y e d played all right now we could also do um, if you join a soccer team, you are now a player. So we could add an ER. But a soccer team is more than one player. It has many players. But in a word matrix, you can't start here and then move vertically. Because we wouldn't say player or player ring. So we can't use players by this way. So what we do is we just draw another box. And it's almost like having to go through the door to get to the next one. Um, Pete Bowers says, you know, we don't leapfrog over anything to get to the next one. You must always go through. So this would be players, and we would put the Fs there. So we would write that out in a word sum as P-L-A-Y plus E-R plus S is rewritten as P-L-A-Y E-R S players. Now we can add suffixes but we can also add prefixes. So a really common prefix that would go with play is when you want to um, watch something again and so we use the suffix re which means again so replay. So I can make replaying, replays, replayed, not so much about replayer. Um, it technically could have meaning, you know, it would be something that plays things again. But because it's not a real common word, I'm not going to write that down. And I want to encourage the students, if you can't use it in a sentence, then you can't write it as a word sum. So the students need to be able to understand what the words mean and use them in a sentence in order to write them down. Then when students share with each other, that's where we increase our vocabulary by learning new words. So for replay, we would do R-E plus P-L-A-Y, and let's do replaying plus I-N-G is rewritten as R-E 
P-L-A-Y-I-N-G, replaying. Okay, so another word that would be an easy one to work with the students would be the word help. And we would use this word because there's not going to be any rules about doubling a letter or dropping a letter or changing a letter when we add a suffix. So we could make those uh, common, the common suffixes, we can make words so we could make helps, we could make helping, we could make helped. Now notice here the ED says t, helped at the end. It's really difficult when students are first learning about suffixes for them to understand that it's not a T. That's why we focus on the meaning of it. Helped means in the past. And what's the suffix that means in the past? ED. All right, and then we could also have a great helper in the room. And just like before, we might have more than one helper. So we have helpers. And then we can maybe add a new suffix here, helpful. F-U-L, right? Or I could do helpfully. So since I have to go through the full, I'm going to have to draw a line and create a box. Helpfully. Or I could also do helpfulness. So again, I'm going through the full box and then adding the suffix ness. And then, of course, the opposite of helpful would be unhelpful. So we can add that prefix there. So with each of these, as we wrote them, the students would write a word sum. So if we wanted to write unhelpful, it would be UN plus H-E-L-P plus F-U-L is rewritten as UN H-E-L-P F-U-L, unhelpful. All right, so after this, and you've practiced with a lot of these words that are just a real simple base word that have generally two letters at the end or a long vowel. Well, the long vowels are a little different sometimes. Um, where there's no rules, then we'll want to get into understanding some of those suffix rules when we have to double a letter or drop the E or change the Y to I. So that's going to be on another video. So feel free to visit that video to see how to help children use the word sums and the word matrices to also learn those spelling rules that go along with adding a vowel suffix.